Hey everyone, so it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man. If you take one look around my room, you'll see at least 10 different items relating to Spider-Man. Um, so I was just, just casually kind of browsing Reddit, just kind of relaxing uh, late at night. I don't actually record videos this late, but I just, I had to make, you know, a video about this because this right here is crazy. So as we all know, Spider-Man creates his own web fluid in his in his web shooters. This has been demonstrated in the movies and all the time in the comics. It's to really show how smart he is as a chemist. People have been trying to recreate his web fluid for like years, probably since the guy was created. This brand new research and brand new like I guess proof is incredible. Some scientists have actually been able to recreate Spider-Man's silk web thing, his his webs, and actually be able to shoot it out of something and it instantly adheres and stays and can lift up to 80 times its own weight. That is mind-blowing. I don't I don't know how else I can like pick like draw this picture for any of you here. But that has been something that people have been stumped over for many moons, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and I recently just came across this on the Spider-Man subreddit. So I like this is like brand new. This just came out. I have constantly dreamt about swinging around, you know, a city as Spider-Man. I know it'll never happen because of G-Force and all that, but like. We're getting closer to at least, you know, swinging from a, a small tree or not very fast in a city. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so this just kind of ignites that inner kid in me to see that this is actually uh, this is actually a reality now. This is brought to us by Fizz.org. The article starts by saying every kid who has read a comic book or watched a Spider-Man movie has tried to imagine what it would be like to shoot a web from their wrist, fly over the streets, and pin down villains. Researchers at Tufts University took those imaginary scenes seriously and created the first web-slinging technology in which a fluid material can shoot from a needle, immediately solidifying as a string, and adhere to and lift objects. These sticky fibers, created at the Tufts University Silk Lab, come from silk moth cocoons, which are boiled in a solution and broken down into their building block proteins called fibroin. The silk fibroin solution can be extruded through narrow bore needles to form a stream that, with the right additives, solidifies into a fiber when exposed to air. Now, this article is very, you know, heavy on the science, so, like, I... I don't know a lot about, I'm, I'm not a chemist by any stretch of the, the imagination. And I'm also not very smart at when it comes to uh, science stuff like this. So I just want to make that very clear up front that I'm not really going to know what a lot of this stuff means and a lot of this stuff is. But from my understanding and from the video proof that I'll show you in a little bit, it actually is a thing. It actually works. They, they they have created this once thought like impossible thing and just now it's here. Now 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 it's here. So I don't know. That's fucking amazing. It continues. Of course, nature is the original inspiration for deploying fibers of silk into tethers, webs, and cocoons. Spiders, ants, wasps, bees, butterflies, moths, beetles, and even flies can produce silk at some point in their life cycle. Nature also inspired the Silk Lab to pioneer the use of silk fibroin to make powerful glues that can work underwater, printable sensors that can be applied to virtually any surface, edible coatings that could, be, that could extend the shelf life of produce, a light collecting material that could significantly enhance the efficiency of solar cells, and more sustainable microchip manufacturing methods. However, while they made significant progress with silk-based materials, the researchers had yet to replicate the mastery of spiders, which can control the stiffness, elasticity, and adhesive properties of the threads they spin. And there's a quick video here. Um, I don't know what this video is showing, but test strands maybe? I don't really know. I don't know. It'll be on screen right now, but let me know what you guys think in the in the comments of what, what the hell this could even be, because that's what it looks like by the the needle there at the top and then the and then the one on the far right there that looks 
uh, like a big spider web. The article continues, a breakthrough came about purely by accident. I was working on a project making extremely strong adhesives using silk fibronin, and while I was cleaning my glassware with acetone, I noticed a web-like material forming on the bottom of the glass, said Marco Lopristi, research assistant professor at Tufts. The accidental discovery overcame several engineering challenges to replicate spider threads. Silk fibronin solutions can slowly form a semi-solid hydrogel over a period of hours when exposed to organic solvents like the like ethanol or acetone. But the presence of dopamine, which is used in making the adhesives, allowed the solidification process to occur almost immediately. When the organic solvent wash was mixed in quickly, the silk solution rapidly created fibers with high tensile strength and stickiness. Dopamine and its polymers employ the same chemistry used by barnacles to form fibers that stick tenaciously to surfaces. That is insane. Obviously, that is something that can be put into a small little wrist device. Um, because if you remember in The Amazing Spider-Man, there was this huge controversy about Spider-Man's web shooters producing smoke and how it took away from the you know whole thing of Spider-Man and whatever. But I think it I think it added to it. I really liked that little detail and I like that, you know, it's kind of a continuous. It's just a little puff of smoke to be like, hey, yeah, this is actually like a device that fires and not just like a a string that just comes out, you know, at will or whatever. You know what I mean? Obviously, I, I think it makes it look a little bit more mechanical and looks cool. But like if this is actually real, people and and with more with some more research and you know, with more time, I'm sure. Within the next five, ten years, we'll see actual like web spinners and web shooters actually come out into the public. Probably going to be like ridiculously expensive and also very big because, I mean, they're going to need somewhere to store all the the web fluid because, I mean, you know, it just it you can't just not store it. I mean, the fact that that Spider-Man can store those little tiny like I I don't even know what you'd call them like little tablets I guess of of web fluid in his wrist at all times and in, and in his belt and everything like that. It's, I don't think that's possible. Like he says he gets like miles of web fluid out of that, like webs out of that. And he hardly ever has to reload his web shooters, but I don't know how I, I like, I don't know. I'm not Spider-Man, but <laughs> Anyways, the next step was to spin the fibers in the air. The researchers added dopamine to the silk fibronin solution, which appears to accelerate the transition from liquid to solid by pulling water away from the silk. When shot through a coaxial needle, a thin stream of silk solution is surrounded by a layer of acetone which triggers the solidification. The acetone evaporates in midair, leaving a fiber attached to any object it contacts. The researchers enhanced the silk fibronin dopamine solution with chiosan? I don't know. <laughs> a derivative of insect exoskeletons that gave the fibers up to 200 times greater tensile strength and borate buffer, which increased their adhesiveness about 18-fold. The diameters of the fibers could be varied between that of a human hair to about half a millimeter, depending on the bore of the needle. Okay, so here's the video that I was talking about that's actually, like, showing the whole process of this happening. And as you can see, like, it's a big device, you know, like, it's... This won't fit on someone's wrist, probably within my lifetime, with a backpack and strings, maybe, you know, or like you could have, you could have, sometimes Spider-Man wears a backpack, right? You could just put the whole big, the big fucking tube of shit in your backpack and then have the, you know, have some like strings going through his suit, maybe, I don't know, and then, and then connected to his web shooters on his wrists and then he, you know, he does the thing and then it activates it. Now, it does take a while to come out, though, so he'd have to sit there. So as of right now, he'd have to sit there in the air for like at least three to four seconds for it to actually come out. And then it still has to actually like solidify and stick. And, you know, it just I don't know. So like you can see there like I mean, it looks like sperm, but it, <laughs> other than the fact that it looks like sperm, it literally just lifted up that scalpel out of the sand and just like almost instantly adhered to it and you know all that. Obviously, like I said, it it takes a second to actually get the whole thing there, but with some more time and some research and you know like actually more time kind of chipping away at this, like you could definitely get that to be near instantaneous, you know, as soon as it 
hits as soon as it hits air or whatever it could come out and be that so it continues the device can shoot fibers that can pick up objects over 80 times their own weight under various conditions the researchers demonstrated this by picking up a cocoon steel boat a laboratory tube floating on water a scalpel partially buried in sand and a wood block from a distance of about 12 centimeters Lopresti noted, if you look at nature, you'll find that spiders cannot shoot their web. They usually spin the silk out of their gland, physically contact the surface, and then draw out the lines to construct their webs. We are demonstrating a way to shoot a fiber from a device, then adhere to and pick up an object from a distance. Rather than presenting this work as a bio-inspired material, it's really a superhero-inspired material. Natural spider silk is still about a thousand times stronger than the man-made fibers in this study, but with little out of imagination and engineering, the innovation will continue to improve and pave the way for a variety of technological applications. As scientists and engineers, we navigate the boundary between imagination and practice. That's where all the magic happens, said Forenzo Amento. What a cool fucking name. <laughs> Frank C. Dobble, professor of engineering at Tufts University and director of the Silk Lab. Those are both sick fucking names everyone here has a cool name we can be inspired by nature we can be inspired by comics and science fiction in this case we wanted to reverse engineer our silk material to behave the way nature originally designed it and comic book writers imagined it and that's where the article ends holy fucking shit <laughs> this is just something that i just found and that i kind of freaked out a little bit you know like i just like i said in the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the video here this means a lot to me and I'm sure many others. Now, I know this doesn't mean that we're going to be swinging around by webs and, you know, by strings and everything like that anytime soon. And even if we could, we shouldn't as people because it will literally just kill us and rip the skin off of our bones. This is just really cool. It has other applications other than just, you know, web swinging it is such a cool thing that now i like i i mean i don't know something that I, I i just wish that like stanley was still around to see this you know one of his favorite characters he's ever created start like start to actually become kind of a reality you know what i mean obviously this doesn't mean spider-man is gonna swing out of a building next you know, next week by any means, but like, wouldn't that be cool? Where literally everything just seems to suck all the time. We get a superhero. That'd be so fucking cool. I, I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention and just give more, uh, like shed some light on it because it's just, it's so cool. It's so fucking cool. If you did like this video, you can go ahead and give it a like. If you didn't, you can give it a dislike. Any feedback is good feedback. Tell me what you thought about all this in comments. I would love to hear what everyone has to say about this. You know, it, it, like I said, I like I keep saying, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> I don't know. If you want to show me some support, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It'll be on screen right now. And if you want to watch another video, uh, that'll also be on screen right now. With all of that out of the way, fuck you all and have a good night.